there's a lot of great information tied up in YouTube videos. Some people estimate that YouTube is either the second or third search engine in the world. There's some argument about that online, but it is an enormous trove of great information that's been growing and growing and growing. But how do you sort through that? It's difficult to sort. The algorithm does a pretty good job, but now Google Bard is adding the capability to search and query information about videos, not just information that's in the description or the metadata, but actually what's in the videos themselves. And I think this is an important inflection point to actually start to look at how we might analyze these things using a large language model. I'm Prophecy. I talk about generative AI, its effect on business, education, jobs, and our well-being. And today we're going to have a little bit longer video where we're going to dive into how to use Google Bard to query YouTube videos. What can we do with this? What are some of the questions that are raised? I have included chapters down below so you can skip to different parts or come back and reference different parts as you so desire. So let's go ahead and get started. So here in Google Bard, they have added quite a number of extensions. You can see what extensions are enabled by going into the upper right hand corner and clicking on extensions. Now, I have turned off these other extensions, such as Google Hotels, Google Flights, Google Maps, because I'm limiting what I want it to explore right now. Um, it will actually respond and direct the queries to YouTube if you use the at YouTube. So even if you have all these turned on and you want to be very specific about uh, what type of query you're going to make, it's not a Maps query, it's not a general query on the web, you're wanting to direct it at YouTube, you can use this at symbol. Okay, so that's kind of a neat feature here, and I'm going to do that throughout these videos to kind of uh, focus in on what YouTube is able to offer. So let's try just a basic query here. I'm going to use the at YouTube, and I'm going to say, please provide me with some top videos about longevity. Okay, it's come back with the results now. Um, what it did here was kind of interesting is that it actually summarized this video. We'll see if it provided other options like I asked it to, but it went ahead and summarized uh, a particular video by The Economist, probably a pretty good source. List the contents of that video, what's inside that video. And it says, here's some additional resources, and here's some other videos. So we can ask it for these top videos. Let's ask it for who are the top professors on YouTube. Okay, so that seems, uh, who are the top professors on YouTube? Oops. So here's some professors. Andrew Huberman does not talk about being a professor, but he is a pr professor. He's a neuroscientist. Okay, Dr. Leonard, we could look at that one. And we could actually see some of this person's videos. Hi, I'm Professor Leonard. I'd like... Okay, and uh, he has nearly a million subscribers. He's probably a top professor on YouTube. Here you can see these different channels. So it will come here and give us some of these uh, links to the actual channels then, both with these little thumbnail images as well, saying that we can view these related channels. Let's ask a more specific one. And let's once again ask it of YouTube. Uh, what is Andrew... Huberman's top performing ah, video. Okay, it says this is his top video with uh, 443, 442 views. So let's go ahead and click on that. And then uh, let's look at his videos. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sort by popular. Um, so this is incorrect. This did not work out. And it this one has over, well, it has almost 8 million views. That's probably a lot more popular 
uh, than what Bard was coming back to. So you can see here it's trying to do uh, good work here, but it's not doing um, exactly what we wanted it to. That's probably a good thing. I think in some ways the data set is so large here that uh, it's going to be very difficult for Google to be able to provide this type of information on YouTube videos. It gets you kind of close, but it's not entirely correct. So let's go ahead and let's look at some of the ways that a video can be summarized. So I can actually prompt it to summarize, let's say, the, oh, the first video in the list. Summarize the first video in this list. Okay, it went to the very first list that we had queried. I should have started a new chat for that. Okay, but here it summarizes that. Now, what the interesting thing is here is that uh, you may notice that on YouTube, a lot of people copy from each other. Okay, maybe that's good. Maybe as Picasso said, good artists borrow, but great artists steal. But could I actually take this and try to make my own video on longevity? Okay, so let's just see if I can do that. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to come over to another site. Okay, so I'm at a site called ai.invideo.io. So one of several systems that will allow you to create YouTube videos, to create videos that you can post on all sorts of places, not just YouTube, from a description. And I'm going to say that um, here's the... Topic. What I did here is I just actually pasted in the description that I was provided by Bard. Okay, and I'm going to say this is a YouTube explainer. And uh, give me a, um, oh, let me see, what should I have? A three minute video, background music, make it spiritual. Okay, because we're going to live long. Okay, any gender, oh, let's have a female voice, any voice, uh, we want somebody with a, okay, let's do middle-aged British. Do I want subtitles? I don't know. Maybe I want subtitles. Let's not get into all this. I'm just going to um, say don't add any subtitles. I'm going to, it's not letting me continue here, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can paste in that description once again. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to generate a video. I'm going to pause my recording for just a second while it does this. Okay, well that took about Oh, nine or ten minutes there. But now I have this video. It's, it looks like it's actually downloading the video right now. Didn't recall asking it to, but have it has this video. Have you ever wondered age and what it means to grow old? It's a question that has puzzled you. Okay, it's now has these eye stock watermarks because it would... Uh, Put those on there until I paid the premium, okay? But here I have this video that's been created. It's an entirely new script. It's not taking that old script. So this would be a video that I could now upload to YouTube. What do I know about longevity? Absolutely nothing, right? Um, except what I have uh, listened to, but I certainly haven't written this script. So I think this is a very interesting phenomenon, I guess I would say. And I think that's one where we might be a little bit worried about how full we're going to get with all sorts of junk being produced on the internet. So that's a way that you could use AI to find videos that are popular, summarize those videos that are popular, and then go out and make your own video that would, in theory, also be popular. Okay, so uh, I don't know that uh, that workflow is uh, great for the future of great good content, but that's uh, kind of what we are sitting on right now. Okay, let's try a few other things here. Let's try something that I often do, and that is I go to YouTube for do-it-yourself projects, a lot of repair projects I do myself. And so I'm always got my iPad there when I'm looking at a video of how to uh, 
repair my dryer or something like that. So let's just ask it that. Uh, uh, YouTube, what? Well, I don't even have to say videos here, but how do I repair a an Amana dryer that is not heating? It's tumbling, but it's not heating. Okay. So it says here's some here's some videos that you might be able to look at. But here's what's really cool is we can now start to synthesize things across multiple videos. And this is, I think, what's going to be very interesting. Even though it's somewhat limited right now, I can just do these five videos. It normally seems to spit back five videos at a time. But summarize the common reasons for the dryer not heating from these videos. Okay, now it's going to start to look at these YouTube videos, and it's going to try to come back with what are those common reasons. I could also ask it, of these five videos, is there one video that has a disagreement or has something very different here? Okay, so this is a thermostat. I can tell you that was what it was. It was a thermostat. Then you can have a heating element, a cycling thermostat, a high limit. I've also had that problem. Timer, loose wire connection, gas coils. Once again, it's giving me these particular videos. Let's uh, see here. I'm going to do a search on something that I made a video for. So let's say, show me the top videos on how to make shredded wheat. I'm sure that most of you came to my YouTube channel because I uh, made shredded wheat. Oh my goodness. It does, doesn't have mine in there. Okay. Well, let's just see here. This um, second one here has got somebody else that is making hot shredded wheat. They're frying the shredded wheat. You do not fry the shredded wheat. You're supposed to put it in water. Okay. But um, yeah, here's somebody else that's frying it as well. Um, but I could uh, ask it, let's say the second video, what are the ingredients needed in the second video? Same sort of thing with those DIY repair. I could ask it, what do I really need as far as um, parts, part numbers, I can start to query those things. Ingredients needed for this recipe are shredded wheat biscuits, milk, butter, sugar, optional. Where can I purchase these? I think it's going to be very interesting. Oh, it knows where I am. I logged into my Google account. It says, hey, you can go down to Walmart Supercenter, Hy-Vee, Price Right, Fresh Market, or Trader Joe's. We don't have a Trader Joe's in Columbia, Missouri. Let's ask it, where is Trader Joe's in Columbia, Missouri? I should ask, where is there one? Okay, it's showing me one in Chesterfield, Missouri. That's only about 120 miles away. So that's very interesting. We got a hallucination when we switched back to asking it where to purchase these things. So it probably would have gone to the first one or the second one, but it's interesting. We do get a hallucination. So this is still a large language model, and large language models are getting better and better, but they still have hallucinations. <laughs> We can also uh, do some things here where we can start to export the data out of Google. So we might try something. Uh, please make a table of the top YouTube stars with a link to their YouTube channel. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to put that YouTube prompt on the beginning of this because I want to make sure it's using YouTube to do that rather than finding something out on the open web. 
That's very interesting. Here's another common error right now. I'm unable to access this YouTube content. So let's just ask it a different prompt. Who are the top YouTube stars? Maybe, maybe creators is the word they're looking for. Okay, and then it actually put it in a table for me. Okay, good God. T-Series has that many million subscribers. I have to check this out. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm behind the times. I've heard of a few of these folks here. I don't see Prophecy listed here yet, but... Who knows, maybe someday I can export that data out to Sheets as well. We might be able to also use this with Google Trends. Okay, so if you are a creator and trying to find a new niche, trying to find videos that are not out there, uh, this might be a great way to start to query and think about videos rather than using the YouTube search algorithm because this hopefully will be more accurate about what is the actual content because people manipulate thumbnails, they manipulate the titles to try and get clicks. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Let's add YouTube, what videos are there? Let's try a new one here. What generative AI topics have not been covered on YouTube? Maybe I'll make my next video based on this response. Okay, so what's interesting here is it came back and it said uh, these have been not fully explored. I mean, there are some videos already, but these, at least according to Google, are not saturated yet. So that's very interesting. Let's just actually see if we can then combine that with what... have have been fully explored. Okay, so let's go the other way. Instead of asking for things that have not been fully explored, I think that is probably a good list, but one generative AI topics uh, have been fully explored. In other words, what topics are saturated? So even though you might see a topic that's trending on Google Trends, maybe the answer is already out there. Maybe you're not going to be able to stand out amongst the crowd. Now, what's interesting here is it's come back with the result. It's given us some uh, links to, I think, popular videos. It says these cover broad general topics, but it says it's difficult to say which topics have been fully explored on YouTube. So they're a good starting point for learning about generative AI. So I do think there's some ways that you can start to use this to find a niche or to narrow into a niche or to uh, start to explore what others have done because you can, in fact, get that summarization. That's one of the things that I think is very easy to do with this. So let's look at some of the questions that this new feature brings up. And I'm going to pick on Andrew Huberman here. I clicked on one of the videos that I uh, had the search results for earlier. And here's a long video. It is um, two hours long, I think. Yeah, it's over two hours long. It's got 80 million views, and it's got nearly 9,000 comments, lots and lots of likes. But what is it really about? But it has also generated a lot of revenue for YouTube and for Andrew Huberman. Okay, so that's a key thing. And Dr. Huberman's videos are very specific, so Google can actually do some very good targeted ads against it, charging a lot of money for those ads that run against his particular channel because they're going to have high conversion rates. And so this is probably a very valuable channel. This is probably a very good source of revenue for Mr. Huberman or Dr. Huberman. But let's go ahead here and let's make a new chat. Um, what are the primary recommendations from this video? 
Okay, let's see what it comes back with here. Look at what has happened. Do I get any ads here? I don't get any ads. Uh, this doesn't count toward his clicks. Now, granted, I needed to know the URL. But even if I had just known about this, these are the primary recommendations. So what's very interesting here is that I have the information coming out of Google Bard without having to watch the video. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that Mr. Huberman or Dr. Huberman has not gotten any views from or more views from me watching the whole thing. He's not gotten more revenue. So what's the incentive for creators that are putting their videos up on YouTube and putting a lot of effort into some of these videos? Obviously, maybe he doesn't put as much effort as some folks do as far as production, but he put a lot of effort in getting his PhD and developing all that knowledge, right? And he reads a lot of scientific papers. So he's now sharing this with this platform where he gets revenue. But what's going to happen to that revenue as these tools become more available? As Google gets better through BARD at analyzing the content of a YouTube video. So I think this is a very important question. How is Google going to react? Are they going to move forward with BARD and let us examine the entire data set. So I want to see the highest rated longevity experts, and I want you to summarize in two pages the things that I should do in order to live longer. And I could then customize that even further. But that's going to take away from the revenue of both Google as well as its creators. So are they going to limit this in order to make sure creators keep on creating? Or is this going to just be another way to drive traffic into those YouTube videos? It's just, is this going to be another interface for YouTube? One of, the one other question that might come up as you're looking at this is, well, how are they going to deal with kids that are searching via BARD? BARD is now uh, available to um, kids that are a little bit younger than it was originally. So could children start to use this in order to bypass some of the, you know, not for kids types of uh, video filters or video blocks, right? Because when I upload this video, I have to say, is it for kids or is it not for kids? And if it is for kids, then it's going to undergo some more scrutiny, right? But if I say it's not for kids, then kids can't access it. Will they still be able to access my content even though... Normally, they wouldn't be able to. Now, that isn't uh, that my content is particularly risque or dangerous or anything like that, but there are some channels out there that discuss all sorts of things that maybe you don't want your children exposed to. Well, Google says that, um, well, Google actually states that they have age appropriate protections in place. So that's so that kids can have a good experience using Google Bard. Their official statement says, we believe Bard can be a helpful tool for teens when they need a little extra inspiration and motivation on their ideas, hobbies, and plans, or when they want to better understand topics quickly in a style that works for them. Whether it's learning homework concepts or getting support through big milestones like applying for their first job or preparing for college, Bard can help. <laughs> Here's another question that this brings up as far as how people monetize YouTube. This is from The Verge, and I'll put a link down below. But it's a good article talking about this new tool. And it says, well, here is a video on how to make the best espresso martini while the video is public, while you don't have to go through some sort of paywall or anything like that to see the video. What happens is America's Test Kitchen actually has a link to their website where you can download the recipe. But that recipe is paywalled. So you would have to sit there and you'd have to write down everything that's in that recipe. But instead, Google Bard will actually analyze that video and tell you what the ingredients are. It's also affecting these types of monetization schemes, if you will, or plans. So if you are thinking, well, I'm going to put how to do something in my video. But then if people want a quick and easy way to download that information, let's say I'm going to make a five-hour video on how to use BARD, and then, oh, you want to just get a quick guide to it, you can download that from ProfC for $3. Well, 
Well, you're going to be able to use Google Bard to basically reconstruct that little cheat sheet or whatever it is that I'm selling or recipe or whatever it is. So I think that's another big question for how this tool is going to be used in the future. Well, this has been a long video, and I want to say thanks so much for watching and for hanging out with me here. Please uh, let me know your thoughts below. Let me know what tricks you found out. And as always, if you have made it all the way to the end of this video, you are part of an elite crowd of watchers, and you should probably subscribe.